Okay. Uh, just getting off the field. Really beautiful day out there. I thought it was going to be a little chilly. I think I overdressed. Um, deep into Cincinnati. And with that, I'll just open it up. Let's go first to Herbie Teofi. Go ahead, Herbie. Hey, Coach. Good afternoon. Uh, Hi, speaking Herbie. of deep into Cincinnati, I say Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, and Tyler Boyd. What's your reaction? And how do you defend against these guys? Yeah, I think this is the best uh, threesome trio that we have gone through uh, against this year. I think our guys respect that, know that, just turn on any play, any game, and they just take turns being the leading receiver for a particular game. Um, heck of a challenge for our guys. I mean, what, that's what we're working at right now, and there's been a lot of conversation about those three wideouts. Let's go next to Sam McDowell. Go ahead, Sam. Hey, Steve. Hi, Sam. Um, Chris Jones talked to us yesterday and just mentioned that uh, it, it's still taken him a while to get back in football shape uh, since coming off that COVID list. Obviously, you've got other guys this week that are coming off the COVID list. What's just the process of figuring out how close to 100% specifically conditioning-wise these guys are this week? Yeah, that, that's a really good point and something we got to be concerned about. I think, to be honest with you, Sam, I, I really trust the guys and – all we ask them is, look, don't don't go out there and keep yourself on the field for a play when you don't think you can do it 100 percent. Let's get somebody else in there. Uh, other than that, you know, we roll a lot of guys through. So I'm hoping the fact that we you know run a lot of people out on the field that that helps guys that are in that situation right now. Let's go next to Pete Sweeney. Go ahead, Pete. Yes, if you were asked about the skill position players, I just was wondering, how do you feel about quarterback Joe Burrow and what he's been able to do so far in, in his young career, and especially uh, watching that tape from last week? Yeah, uh, really, really impressive. I, I mean, look at – this may sound crazy, but I see a young Tom Brady. I mean, this guy does everything. He does not look like a second-year quarterback that missed a lot of his first year. Um, totally impressed with him. Began the meeting on Tuesday. You know, we were just finishing up on the last game, but – began the meeting talking about Joe because I think he's that good. Um, all the weapons we've talked about and all that, uh, but you got to have a quarterback that can get it done, and he really does. Uh, we've got to try to find out some ways to make him uncomfortable. Uh, easier said than done. We've got three more. We'll go right down the line, starting with Vahe. Go ahead, Vahe. Hey, Steve. I, I Hopefully you're still glad to see faces now that I'm talking. Um, no. Brad, I'll have a follow-up after this question. Steve, I know you're, you know, in the middle of the season and, and you won't really think about this stuff till the end of the season and where this all goes, but, but how would do you just explain in, in layman's terms, a, a couple of, a couple of factors in how you go from being three and four to winning eight in a row? I, I mean, are there specifics you can point us to? The then first one. Through. Yeah. The first then one that jumps in my mind is, is tremendous leadership at the top. And that begins with Andy. I think we talked about this before that there's, there's no panic in Andy and it filters right on through other. And the next thing is tremendous trust. Uh, you know, Andy trusts in us. We trust him. The players trust each other. We trust the play uh, to me. Uh, the trust factor when you're going through that is huge, you know, believing in what you do. I think our guys did that. I mean, I know I had talks with the defensive unit about it when we were struggling, uh, you know, both as a team, as a defensive unit and as a defensive unit. And I just felt like the guys bought into that embraced it and just kept on grinding away. I've said this before, I believe assistant coaches, you know, like the, the staff that I have made a huge difference in what we were able to do, you know, in a turnaround. And I'm, I'm hoping we're still turning because I want to keep going forward and getting better. And, and the follow-up, Steve, is really, are, are we going to learn later that there was some double secret meeting that was the, the moment where everything changed? Uh, I, I mean, it, and, and I mean, really, the real serious question is, that how much did you deal with doubt during that? Well, look at uh, seven games in, you know, especially with a 17-game season now, and you got a few win, wins under your belt. It, it, there's never time to panic. I mean, you'd be panicking later in December, but I just think we, you're in this league long enough. You know that you can get it turned if you stick together and you keep believing in what you're doing. Don't change. Don't panic. That's why I keep going back to that. Um, I believe every man to a man did that. And more than anything, I think that was the foundation and what we were able to do. Go next to Matt Derrick. Go ahead, Matt. Hey, Steve, between the, the COVID situation and the game situation last week, you got some young guys, some action. Uh, I know DiCaprio was your leading tackler, but Dorian O'Daniel and Josh Jackson got some time too. What did you kind of learn and see from those three guys? 
Yeah, that's a great point. I'm glad you brought that up, Matt, because it was great. Listen, those guys work their butts off every day. I mean, they're doing scout team. They're working special teams. They're doing scout team special teams. They're in every meeting. They're in early meetings. Uh, Coach House has them in there. You know, Dorian, some other guys you just mentioned. And it's nice to see it pay off and that they can get out on the field and perform. And I agree with you. I thought those guys did the, the three that you mentioned did some good things for us. I mean, I would like to be able to do that in the next two games. I don't know if that's going to happen, but it certainly would be good for us if we could and really proud of what those guys did. We'll go last to Adam Teicher. Go ahead, Adam. Hey, Steve. Um, Chris Jones played a little bit less uh, against the Steelers than he otherwise would have. Was that because he was coming off COVID? Was that maybe because of the lopsided nature of the game? Was there something else going on there? And, and Brad, I'll have a second question as well. Yeah, Adam, more, uh, more I think, because of the lopsided uh, part of the game, to be honest with you, because it wasn't – he was in a – as I can recall, he was in a normal rotation, you know, through the first three quarters of the game. And, again, we roll people through. You guys know that. I mean, we have eight D linemen that are in there that are going to be in there in a normal rotation. And I think it – I don't think it was anything – due to the COVID. I don't ever remember Madam coming to me and saying, you know, I'm feeling winded or tired, unless you talk to Brendan about that, but I don't remember that. Okay. And as Sam mentioned, he talked about COVID kind of throwing him off stride. He felt like he was in a pretty good rhythm and, and then he kind of had to start from, from basically from scratch again. Do you, um, could you see that from him and do you, and can you tell in practice this week, maybe he's bouncing back a little bit? Uh, I mean, I, I, he feels like he's bouncing back and moving around pretty good. I, I can't recall a week ago. I know that I, I don't think he had a lot of practice reps because it wasn't if I my memory serves me. He really didn't get cleared until later. I want to say it was Friday. And, you know, and then we don't do much on Saturday. So that might have had something to do with what you're talking about, Adam, because he really didn't have a lot of reps under his belt during the week to get ready for the game. But listen, if that's what he's saying, that it affected my trust that and hopefully we're past that now. Coach, we appreciate the time. Thanks for joining okay. us. Okay, thank you.